How's it going everybody? Cam from Flamingo and today we're back with more vaping news. It looks like America is finally getting some good news regarding vaping, but it looks like Canada might be taking a step back. First I want to go over some breaking news because the CDC has officially stated that we were right. They've obviously been doing some very rigorous testing and they've actually found vitamin E acetate in all of the patients that they've tested. So just like we've all been saying, vitamin E acetate is definitely the leading cause of vaping related lung illnesses. Everything's coming up Millhouse. News has recently surfaced in America regarding the federal ban on vaping products and they're actually separating it from e-cigarettes. Confused? I know I was, so let's explain a little bit. A few days ago, a press release came out with Kellyanne Conway stating the fact that the FDA can control e-cigarettes, but they cannot control what happens with vaping or what happens in vape shops. What? I can only assume that they mean e-cigarettes are closed pod systems like the Juul, etc., and vaping means refillable devices? Let's play the clip. And before I give you this interview quote, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. That way you're going to stay up to date with all the latest vaping news. So I think we should all stop using vaping and e-cigarettes interchangeably. They are different. E-cigarettes are exactly that. They're cigarettes. They are um, under the Tobacco Control Act. So HHS has and FDA have jurisdiction uh, over cigarettes and e-cigarettes under the Tobacco Control Act. They do not have jurisdiction over vaping in vape shops. So while she is right saying that e-cigarettes are not vaping, because vaping is a describing word, e-cigarettes are not cigarettes. I do also want to mention that later in this interview, she actually compares buying vape juice to buying razor blades. I don't understand this lady. So this whole thing doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but from what she's saying it appears the fact that vape shops might actually be exempt from this flavor ban. This would mean that vape shops in the United States would be able to sell fruit, dessert, candy flavored e-liquid. And I maybe pod systems? If it's being sold in a vape shop, does it still count under the flavor ban? I don't get this. Now while this would mean that flavored vape products would be legal on a federal level, I'm not too sure what it would mean for a state to state level because they've already banned flavors. All we can do is hope that states that have banned flavors will have to revert the ban and all these shops will be able to go back to normal and start selling their flavored e-liquid just like how they used to. There is one big problem with her statement though, and that's the fact that most of the statements she's made in the past have turned out to be completely false. Heck, when you google her name, there's a lot of bad press going against her. Also just look at her face, she doesn't really look trustworthy, she's probably a lizard person. Either way, we're gonna have to wait for big boy Trump to tell us what's up, and it doesn't look like he wants to lose any more voters, so... That's a good sign, but since we're on the subject of flavor bans, there's actually some crazy news coming out of Nova Scotia in Canada. And just as a fair warning, this is one of the stupidest things I've seen so far. Smoke Free Nova Scotia has recently done a survey of 670 people between ages 16 and 24, and they say that 96% of them are using flavored vaping products. I'm also going to have to take the assumption here that this was specifically for a vaping survey and these are not just 670 random people. The executive director believes that we have an epidemic on our hands because people in high school are trying vaping. I mean they're also trying weed, hard drugs, alcohol, and they've always been trying smoking, but they're trying vaping. They do think that there's hope though because they said that 50% of the people that they surveyed said that they would quit vaping if flavors were removed. Now what they didn't mention is are these people consistently vaping? Are they regular vapors or have they just used it a couple times? They also forgot to mention how many people said that they would go back to smoking cigarettes if vaping was banned, but it doesn't matter. People are vaping. That's the epidemic here. But luckily they've actually interviewed some very prestigious people with very important input on the matter. So let me read you a quote. This is from some university student who has never smoked a day in her life. She has to say, For people using e-cigarettes to quit smoking cigarettes, it's probably not that important to have fun flavors just to get that nicotine. So for anyone that's attempted to quit smoking in the past and has had no luck until they tried vaping because of the amazing flavors that we have available to us, well, you just don't matter. I mean the Nicorette gum is also flavored. And same with the nicotine lozenges and the nicotine sprays and I'm pretty sure they're flavoring nicotine patches at this point, but get rid of those fun flavors. I mean, I would rather use something that tastes like grapes rather than something that tastes like an ashtray, but th those fun flavors don't matter. Do you just, just, just quit smoking. Just quit, just quit, just, just quit or die. 
And now here's where these idiots have lost any sort of credibility that they had left. That same genius executive has to say, 66.5% of the youth between ages of 16 and 18 are using 50 milliliters or higher doses of nicotine. 50 milliliters or higher doses of nicotine. Does this guy think that people are using 50 milliliters of pure nicotine as one single dose? Now don't get me wrong, I completely agree with them saying that we should cap the maximum amount of nicotine because the maximum 66 is just far too high. And I also totally agree with the fact that we should ban any sort of advertisement in convenience stores and just take them out of convenience stores in general. But how could we let someone who doesn't even understand how nicotine is measured make any sort of statements? But maybe this guy's right. Maybe we should just take the Wally route and just make everything taste like the color gray. That means no more flavored cereals, because those are appealing to kids. No more flavored alcohol, because that's appealing to kids. No more flavored soda, because that's appealing to kids. These are all things that are not good for kids. And if you ask me, I'm pretty sure that Ricky's just pissed off that no one's going to give him two smokes. Smokes, let's go. Smokes, let's go. Lucy smokes, let's go. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Do you guys think that Trump is actually going to make a federal ban on vaping? Or do you think he's going to try to save his votes? And of course, don't forget to tell me what you guys think about smoke-free Nova Scotia. I'll leave the link to the article in the description down below. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and tell me what you think about the new set. My name's Cam from Flamingo, and I'll see you in the next video.